Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In a previous video I tried to fix my PlayStation 3 and my Xbox that had the yellow light and the red room problems, but unfortunately the PlayStation 3 repair took so long that I had to split the video in two parts, so in this part I'm going to try to fix my Xbox. So I've already tested the console and every time I turn it on, the three lights come on and based on which lights are flashing there could be different meanings, for example overheating, AV cable error or also hardware failure and in this case we have a general hardware failure. That means that inside the console there could be one or more components that have issues and there's also no error code displayed. So let's open it up to see what the problem might be. I want to give it a good clean on the outside before opening it. Unfortunately, it won't be very easy to open because there is the external case, but it's also tightly assembled and every time you try to open it, some plastic pieces always break, so I really hope I won't damage it too much. And now I need to pry the front edge of the bottom vein away from the faceplate. I'll also use the tip of a spudger to open it and release the clips along the left and right sides of the bottom vent. I also need to pull the faceplate away, try not to ruin anything. So the top vent is secured to the console via clips and you need to use a tool or something to make them move and the first two are located here under the faceplate. So the upper and the lower case are attached together via several latches that are located here on the back of the console and on the front of the console and it's not easy at all to try to separate the upper case to access the motherboard. It's actually the hardest part because usually you end up breaking some parts and some plastic pieces for sure. Okay, so finally I managed to remove it and fortunately it doesn't seem like I broke any piece of plastic back here, but that's definitely something I wouldn't do a lot of times. And now I have to remove the eject button and also six silver screws right over here that are securing the upper case to the metal casing. Before starting, I just want to say that this video is not a tutorial and should not be interpreted as one since I'm not an expert and I only do these repairs because I enjoy it. But inside the console there could be charged capacitors or other components that could be dangerous, so don't copy what they do. And definitely it's not easy to access the motherboard of an Xbox. And now I have to remove the optical drive. I still have to remove the screws on the back of the metal cover and the only thing left is to remove the heatsink and then I can finally take a look at the board. Finally, I can take a look at the board, but I want to check everything carefully, so I also want to remove the heat sinks. And to do that, I have to remove the X clamps on the back of the board, and I'll use a screwdriver to do that. I just need to apply pressures to the sides of the clamp, and I can remove it. And finally, after half an hour, I can finally see the motherboard without any issues. and. I would say that besides some dust and I'll obviously need to replace the thermal paste, I didn't see any obvious signs of problems. So let's have a closer look with the microscope. I definitely need to clean the board. It's not as dusty as the PS3, but it still needs to get cleaning. And I also have to remove the old thermal paste. So I'll just focus on that for now. So it only took a bit of compressed air to remove all the dust and now I'm going to remove the old thermal paste with a spudger.
So I was cleaning the board and honestly trying to figure out what the problem could be when I saw this. And that's when I noticed that all the 2200 microfarad capacitors are swollen, definitely need to be replaced. You can see that compared to these, they are much more bloated, so let's try replacing them. I marked all the swollen capacitors on the back of the board, in that way I know which one I have to remove. I'm going to add a bit of solder in each solder joint, in that way it's going to be easier to desolder them, and then I'm going to replace all the capacitors. So I actually tried to remove every capacitor back here, but in a few hours I just managed to remove one. And that's because I think there is not much fluid inside the solder, so I ended up cutting the capacitor's legs, but they got stuck inside the solder joints and it took me a long time to remove them. So I think that in this case the solder braid isn't just enough and I'm going to use a desoldering gun, because in this case it's going to be easier to desolder every capacitor. So I finally managed to remove all the capacitors and I have to say it wasn't easy but they definitely needed to be replaced and now it's time to install the new replacement capacitors. Finally, I replaced all the capacitors and I have to say it wasn't easy at all, but for now I don't see any other problems so I'll just reassemble it and see if it works. But speaking of circuit boards, I also wanted to mention PCBWay, which offer custom PCBs, personalized assembly services and various accessories that are useful for projects like this, with the ability to customize every detail from the size of the PCB to the color of the traces and if you're working in a simple project, there website has plenty of options, along with a large collection of projects created by others that can be a great source of inspiration, so if you're interested I'll leave a link in the description below and now let's see if this works. So now I need to apply thermal paste and place the heat sinks back in place. And I also have to put these parts back in place and it's not easy. Try not to break anything. Everything is back in place and now let's see if it works and let's just hope for the best. Well, I don't see a red light anymore. And it's, it seems to be working fine. So I guess I really just needed to replace those capacitors. Let me grab a controller to see if it works. And it seems to be working fine, but 
it almost feels like it's not reading the hard disk because usually it should let you select a profile when you turn on the console. So maybe I could try removing and reinserting the hard drive again. Let's see if it changes something. Let's see if it works. Well, so far so good, it's turning on like before. But I still have the same problem. So I really hope it's an issue related to the hard disk and not the Xbox itself. Maybe I could try to see if it works with another hard drive, but I don't think I have a spare one. So for now, I'll just try to see if it reads the games. Well, the game is working perfectly, so there's nothing to worry on that front, but the problem is that I don't think I have a spare hard drive to check if the issue is related to the Xbox itself, but I'm still happy that I managed to get the Xbox working and powered on. Maybe if I'll find another hard drive, I can see if there's more work to do on this Xbox, but for now, this video ends here. So it's been three days and I managed to borrow a hard drive to finally test the Xbox. I replaced it and luckily it worked. I also tested the old hard drive multiple times and it kept showing error 67, which I found is most likely related to the hard drive itself. So for now, I would rule out other issues with the Xbox. As always, thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments what you think. And I'd say that this time, fortunately, it wasn't too difficult. Let me know if you had any similar issues with your PlayStation 3 or your Xbox. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to my Patreon page if you want to see updates, photos and videos behind the scene and see ya in the next video. Bye!